It's true that some have softened the rock and made the hard place a little less hard by banding together in cooperatives, which help alleviate the problem of rock bottom prices while allowing the farmer freedom to make his own decisions. Even though that decision may sometimes be the painful and expensive one of voluntarily sacrificing a part of his hard-won yields to avoid glutting the market. Okay, drop them. Drop them all. Sure hate to do it. You raise them and put them on the ground. Some farm producers, like the broiler men, must bear the capital costs for building and maintaining their units and furnish all the labor. But the industry, while it provides them a market, also makes the decisions about the size of their flocks, the growing requirements, and the feed formulas. Mr. Mathis, we have you uh, 68,000 baby chicks here. We'll be uh, moving those at around eight weeks. If there's anything that the survivors, the men with the wit and the grit to make a go of it between the rock and the hard place, if there's anything they have learned through their perseverance, it is that they must grow. Grow in the size of their economic units. Grow or die. Machinery is too high priced not to keep it working. On as many acres you can spread it out on. What Daddy had back in the 40s and 50s might have seemed like a lot, but we get less for what we produce now than we did then. 30 years ago. We just got to keep expanding. A few more olive trees, better bearing trees, and I could breathe a whole lot easier. Anyone can have a bad year on the farm, and I've had my share of them. But what holds me together is that we are diversified on this farm, and if we happen to lose on a couple of crops, we have always have cattle to fall back on. Sometimes I just like to go in the pasture, park under a pine tree, and watch the cattle graze. This gives me a great deal of pleasure. Hit it again, $200 bill. Hit it again, $200, oh, 25 yeah. now, 50 now, 75 now. Hit it again, $200 bill. 25 now, 50 now, 55 now, $400 bill. Now, 25, With me, pigs have always been my pig. I've always liked raising hogs. I always figured that when I grew up that I wanted to have and grow a good herd of deer out hogs. And now I'm thankful to say that I have some hogs that I'm proud of and have been doing good for me. Time gets rough sometimes, but I've always tried to stick with them, and I find the hogs have been good to me. Well, there goes Princess Vivian. My wife says I always name them after my old girlfriends. <laughs> nothing like uh, working for yourself. Just nothing like it. You have the full responsibility of everything that goes on in your ranch. You know, any mistakes that are made, they have to be your own fault. You know, I've always uh, felt that an almond tree is like a young woman as, as they come into bloom. Uh, they're beautiful. And, and all the way through, as they are coming to blossom and as they uh, bear their fruit, they are all I think all of you. What keeps them going? The Barney Migliori's, the Ed and Jim Rasps, the Eldon Wesley's, and the other successful family farmers who bring forth from between a rock and a hard place the plenty which is the foundation of the American standard of living. Partly it's the normal drive of successful businessmen everywhere who seek to provide the best they can for their families. Partly it's the dream of handing on a heritage, a heritage they know their sons may in time ignore as the lure of the city calls more and more of them away from the land. And partly it's a timeless virtue the virtue of self-reliance, oh. still at work in a world where it is sorely needed. Just like you were chucking her in yesterday. You know, time to feed those cattle. I gotta go. Ah, uh, come on, can't you play longer? Nope, that's it. 
When Elmer, my father-in-law, built this house in 1932, he planted that row of trees, an example of his faith in the future. Things could not have been more bleak for farmers than they were in the days of the Depression. But Elmer meant to stick it out. He meant to be here when those trees were big enough to shelter his house from the wind. And he was too. Now I'm here, and I'm taking out his feeding setup and his barn and changing everything. But you have to change with the times. I'm making this land produce like it never could have in Elmer's time. And it takes a tremendous amount of capital and management to do it. Maybe I'm gambling too big. A lot of farmers fall by the wayside as the competition gets tougher and tougher. And maybe there's some that think that I'll be one of them. But all of these cattle have to have windbreaks. And me, I'm planting trees. <laughs>